and so it's just crazy. Wednesday, I think. Oh, that's the important natural resource. Oh, that's the important natural resource. Anyway, I better get going. We ready, Andy? Yes. Okay. Uh, Andrew was just at a board meeting yesterday when we approved you, so. Okay. Hey, I'm John Ford, president of the PAVA, and I want to welcome members and guests this morning's meeting, especially our speakers today, Vicki Rudin and Chris Avers from the Port Angeles Fine Arts Center. And Vicki, could you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we have a thought of the day, Secretary Peggy. When they say a man is a born executive, they mean his father probably owns the business. <laughs> All right. And you thought the Reader's Digest wasn't around anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a business portion of the meeting this morning. Um, we'll do announcements in a minute, but let's first start off, see if we have any members with uh, guests this morning or guests who'd like to introduce themselves. Ted? Today? Okay. The next uh, next uh, item on the agenda is uh, the minutes. We have the minutes been circulated. Some of the tables, hopefully, that for the June 21st, June 28th, and for our board of directors meeting uh, yesterday. And um, oh, hey, Dee, how are you? Good to see you. Um, anyway, um, assuming they've been reviewed. And they're going to be up on the website as well. Uh, uh, could I get a motion? I'm sorry. I make a motion that we accept the minutes as written. All right. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Thank you very much. Sir. All right. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone with opposed nay? Thank you. Okay. Um, again, the minutes then, and uh, we'll be at the website uh, later this week. Under Section 1.1 of our bylaws, any person, firm, business, or having an interest in the purpose of PABA upon acceptance of the Board of Directors and payment of the required dues is qualified for membership and is entitled to one vote. I'm proud to announce that we have uh, four new members. Two of them are with us today. Woo! Dave Newbert and uh, Dave's right over here. Matthew Rainwater. And um, the other two are John Hallberg, uh, the guy who runs our rowing program here in town. And uh, he'll be at a future meeting, and so will Nancy Barry of Quilson, who will be joining us as well. Anyway, could I have each one of you come to the microphone and receive your membership certificate? Let me start with Matthew over here. Matthew, say a few words about yourself. You could. Here's your certificate. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Please, go ahead. Um, I, thanks. I'm honored to, to be a member. Um, for those of you that don't know me, uh, well, you know my name now, Matthew Rainwater. Um, one of the reasons why I joined is because I'm actually, I like the, the program, I like what you guys support. I li I'm, I'm a uh, Border Patrol agent, and PABA has always been very favorable and treated the Border Patrol very kindly, and I really enjoyed your support. I didn't know that a membership was available to everybody or to people that just support it. I thought you actually had to have a business. So I decided to, when I found out I could, I decided to join. Um, in conjunction with that, if you don't mind me taking a minute, 
another thing that I'm working on is actually um, a program I come calling Pennies for Quarters. It's a project that myself and Debbie Spinks are working on to help out homeless veterans to basically build tiny houses, get some land, build some tiny houses uh, for homeless veterans to be able to get in and get reintegrated and work on or and get back to a normal life. So I'm excited about that project. I'm excited about the fact that I got tremendous help in Debbie who works at Jace uh, um, Real Estate. And I look forward to being able to contribute to this uh, or organization. Good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Matthew also have a tie, I believe, with one of our political candidates. Uh, oh. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't necessarily want to bring politics into it. <laughs> but by all means, um, I'm on Maggie Roth's campaign. Um, so I support Maggie Roth for county commissioner. <laughs> And I would appreciate your guys' support as well. Thank you. We also have one of Maggie's uh, opponents in the corner there, Randy Johnson. Also running, one of the four, four running. Anyway, Dave Newbert. Dave and I are old, old friends, both former chamber presidents. I'm also his, his chair of his, his, uh, his campaign committee. Dave, come on over. Thank you. Yeah, come on. We'll give you this certificate here. Well, thank you very much. There we are. I'm glad to be accepted as a member of this organization. If for no other reason, it means that my check cleared. So it's a good <laughs> job. Uh, my name is Dave Newbert, and uh, I'm an attorney in uh, Port Angeles. I've been practicing here for 25 years. Uh, the first seven years of my legal career, I was a public defender. I was the head of the public defender's office in this county for four years and in private practice at Platterman Law Firm for 20 years after that. I retired from there at the end of last year. Since then, I've been working as a judge pro tem in the district court. I gotta leave early today to go cover court this morning, as a matter of fact. And I am a candidate for position two for Clallam County Superior Court uh, judge position. That'll be on the decided on the November ballot. A couple of areas that I'm really interested in working in uh, would be picking up the pace at which criminal cases are decided in our county. Uh, the State Board for Judicial Standards has set a, a goal that 90% of all criminal cases should be decided within four months. And last year in our county, we only hit 63%. So there is room for improvement there. That improvement uh, means more efficiency, which certainly is a way to stay within the budget and uh, lower it, lessen the hit on taxpayers. Another goal that I have as Superior Court Judge will be to establish a much needed Veterans Court in our county. I'm glad that Matthew mentioned the needs of veterans in this county. Uh, fully 44% of returning service members from Iraq and Afghanistan have experienced difficulties related to PTSD, substance abuse, and depression. And some more and more of those folks are ending up in our legal system. Nationwide Veterans Courts have helped 11,000 returning veterans. Uh, it, it holds folks accountable but it links them with services that they can benefit from in order to reduce recidivism. That's repeat offenses. That also lessens expenses, strengthens families, and strengthens communities. That's a little bit more about me. I put some information out for you folks who would like to learn more, and you're welcome to ask questions. It looks like the first one's for me. I just wanted to make a comment. The other day I had the pleasure of sitting in the courtroom uh, with reporters, but you happen to be the judge pro tem. Yes. And I wanted to compliment you on how informative you were to the individuals who had infractions, how polite you were to them, and to me, as as an outsider, I wasn't there as an individual who had something. But I was impressed with your professionalism and the compassion that I saw as you sat on the bench towards individuals and you were willing to listen to what they had to say. I was impressed. Well, I appreciate that very much, Maggie. That's, that's important for me to know. Well, I had been in there and listened to Mr. Porter and I listened to you and there is a, de a definite difference and I was very impressed with how you dealt with the individuals. You were not, uh, it wasn't, you're guilty, you know, that's it. You, you gave them the information and you gave them the options, and one of the things that I had never heard before was deferred. You can defer this, 
one time you have seven years before you can do it right. again. Mm -hmm. and I was I was impressed with how well you explained it to the individual. Well, I think that's important to do because when people are better informed, obviously they make better decisions. I mean, we've all done that in business, and uh, you know that's. My goal is to meet the needs of folks so we can provide equal justice under the law. Because the way I look at it, everybody who walks through that door of that courtroom stands equally. And uh, my goal, I, I get, the benefit I have is I get along with everybody. So I don't play favorites. I'm a plight attorney. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Another one. Some announcements. I haven't seen Harry yet, but uh, Harry's got his Governmental Affairs Committee. We'll follow this meeting at 8.30 in the uh, back room there. All PABA members are invited to attend. And uh, again, it begins at 8.30. Uh, Edna, an announcement on perhaps on the Fourth of July parade. Uh, if you weren't there, the Fourth of July was a very success, which was a combination of it's our fourth event this year. It's been a community event. We started kind of sort of with, with the Coho thing. This organization was a part of that. The Chamber was part of that. PA Can, Revitalize. We've all been, and so the 4th of July in downtown Port Angeles was once again a collaboration of all those folks with the Chamber taking the lead on that. Uh, we had seven weeks to get it to pull it off. And we had, if you weren't there in the... <coughs> Excuse me. We had the Gateway Transit lanes were full of booths and sold out of everything, right, Carol, Randy, all you guys that were there. We had a slew of folks in that that just walked through. The uh, fry bread was the big hit. The pie lady was the big hit. You name it, the food was great. Red, Red Lion ran out of food, but they had a refrigerator. The other people didn't. We ran out of cotton candy. But the amazing thing that we ran out of, we had over in the gateway, was a children's section. <clears throat> and we had, we had everything over there. My store and I donated 12 dozen cupcakes. They all went in the cake walk. We had a cupcake walk instead of the cake walk. They all went. We had, ran out of rocks for the rock painting. They had to go back and get loads of rocks. We thought if we got 30 or 40 kids, we were going to have a roaring success. Josh, five, 600 kids. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 We had more children in downtown Port Angeles. We rivaled Halloween. Uh, we ran out of rocks. We ran out of uh, face painting stuff. Uh, we <coughs> ran out of the tiles that Home Depot brought to have the painting on. Uh, it was just an amazing, amazing event in downtown Port Angeles. But the biggest thing is it's our fourth collaborative effort of the Chamber, the Downtown Association, this association, PA Can, Revitalize. All of us met as a group and worked. And one of the things that happened that was unfortunate at the tail end of the parade, usually uh, kicks that bank, Kirby Bauer, gets a big round of thank you as does Wave Broadband. And they didn't have an entry, either one of them. <laughs> yeah. John and I were saving our speeches for thank you very much. And they weren't in the parade. But but if you get a chance on your Wave Broadband bill, write a thank you on it. <coughs> the people that need to see it may not see all of them, but, but write a thank you on your Wave, wave Broadband bill that says, you know, thank you for our fireworks were great, bigger than they've been. Uh, People that wanted firecrackers didn't get them, but it was a safer, saner community, I think, this year. Absolutely. So, that's it. Thank you very much. We have the George Bergner. George, I'm going to talk about the subcommittee that uh, we're now heading. Looking for some members, I believe. As many of you know, uh, there's a group that's been very concerned about the um, substantial elimination of the parking lot from the Federal Main Life Center. Uh, eight volunteers did a four-day survey of the people exiting their cars, and we were more than surprised that, uh, lo and behold, it was who we would expect, which is us, with a very large percent of uh, locals, with their children, grandma, uh, the 
elderly, the disabled, who use that lot to take in the wonders of our Hollywood Beach area, which include not only the beach, but also that wonderful children's playground, which, by the way, was donated by Spain many years ago. And uh, also, of course, the Olympic Discovery Trail, plus all the wonderful businesses in the immediate area. Uh, that parking lot has been there for 32 years and is full much of the time. So uh, we formed a subcommittee yesterday which will uh, do more to publicize uh, the city's uh, collaboration with the Pharaoh to take most of that parking lot away. Uh, anyone who's interested in helping uh, with that effort, please see me. Thanks. Thank you, George. Andrew May, Party of the Year. Yes, and I have to apologize. I'm going to do a little corny announcement here, but I have uh, dressed up appropriate. We're Who has never here. been to the Corn Roast? Who's never been to the Corn Roast? It is truly oh, the Party I'm of the sorry. Year if you haven't that. been there. We, we, do <laughs> like corn we do like Corn Roast virgins. We can, all <laughs> them. we can all remember our first time through them. So what it is, is every Sunday, Every first Sunday in August, 450 of my closest friends and strangers come on up to the house from noon to midnight. Sunny Farm picks their corn for us at 6 p.m. on Saturday. So we're not even grilling 24-hour-old corn. The pizza guy makes about 34 pizzas. By the way, not only does he have a red and white sauce, he has an Indian curry. And my favorite, if you've never had a stone-fired Thai peanut sauce pizza with like grilled <laughs> scallops and shrimp, ooh. Another one of my um, infamous columnistas, Pat Neal, if you know him, he's always grilling up all sorts of wonderful seafood. It's an event for the entire family from 2 to 92. So please, if you like food, if you like people, or if you want to come to the best beer bar in all of the peninsula for one day, come on up to the Corn Rouse. Be there or be square. Now, it, it is really truly the party of the year for Port Angeles. If you haven't been there, you've got to go. You kind of come and go and everything else. It's a terrific thing. Do we have any announcements uh, from the membership at all this morning? Yes, Ed. Appropriate or not, here I go. He was a longtime member. His services today. Yes, Bill Larson, Captain Bill Larson's funeral services for skipper of the of the Lady Washington, the guy who went from private to colonel in the army, Green Beret, uh, and a friend to many many of us in this room. Uh, the funeral services are two forty five today at Brennan Ford. On bad news uh, of things like that, I was just notified yesterday that longtime resident Harriet Buckman, who was also oh, really? the executive director of NOTAC, died on uh, Friday. And uh, the family is planning a uh, celebration of life in Port Angeles sometime in August. But they've requested no flowers. I do have an address if anyone wants to send a card down to Texas for the family, a sympathy card. And her memorial is uh, requests were for uh, the scholarship donations to come to NOTAC. So that will be coming out in the paper in about a week. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much. That's very sad news. Harriet was 91. 91. Just over 90 did, where did he die at? Was, did he die here? No, she was in Texas. Yeah, in Texas. She's okay. lived, the last couple of years, she's lived in Texas okay. with her daughters. And uh, it was peaceful, um, and uh, it was expected. So they're at peace with it. Yeah, lost well, some good ones lately. Many thanks, and uh, now over to our presentation, introducing them, okay. our, our own Andrew May. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, members and guests, good morning, and welcome to another beautiful day in Port Angeles. And beauty is exactly the program we're going to be discussing today. But before I go on, I would be remiss in my professional capacity if I didn't mention that these two ladies both have magnificent yards that they toil on weekly, so kudos on that as well. But you know what's really also beautiful is the Fine Arts Center. We are a town of only 20,000 people, yet we not only have a Fine Arts Center, we have a Fine Arts Center and surrounding grounds. 
that have magnificent works of art out there as well. And for a small town to have a fine art center is just one of many things that really improves the quality of our life. That have people move here, stay here, maybe even contribute to opening businesses here. So what is the fine arts center? And more importantly, what is this paint the peninsula, getting art out and about in our wonderful environment? Today we have two very strong patrons of the arts who have worked with the Fine Arts Center here to discuss that. So please join me in a beautiful welcoming to Christine Abris and Vicki Rudin. Welcome, ladies. <laughs> Chris and I are going to be operating as sort of a tag team today. Um, I've got some things I want to tell you, and then she will lead you in observing the uh, PowerPoint that we have put together. Um, I know, particularly as Andrew said, I'm hopefully preaching to the choir. I know many of you are already or have been involved at the Art Center. I see the faces of a lot of people who have attended our events, who have been part of the membership, and I just want to assure you that the place is alive and well, and we hope you will continue your involvement in it. Um, <coughs> when I talked with John Brewer about being a program for you, uh, and wanted to share information about our summer events, he said, well, I hope you'll also tell the group about the situation in which the Art Center is right now. Um, he said, a lot of people don't know what's going on. And so that's one thing, one message that we want to get across today as well. Um, reorganization at the Fine Arts Center began at the start of this year, 2016. There's been a restructuring of the agreement between the City of Port Angeles and the Port Angeles Fine Arts Center Foundation. There is new staffing. The director is no longer a city employee. That's one of the big changes. The city has been phasing out its funding for the art center, but it has not cut the art center adrift. I think that's a a bit of misinformation that we want to correct. Um, over a three-year period of time, the city is reducing its funding for the Art Center. But that really is not a new situation. For many, many years, the city did not contribute funding to the Art Center. It was primarily supported by the Esther Webster Trust and the fundraising done by the Friends of the Port Angeles Fine Arts Center. The city is still the owner of the five-acre Webster property, which includes the art park that Andrew just lauded, and the Webster House Gallery. And the city is responsible for the upkeep and maintenance of the property and the gallery house. And this, <coughs> this is not unlike the arrangement when the property was initially given to the city by Esther Webster 30 years ago. During the past few months, some major changes have been occurring at the Art Center. The operating systems for the Art Center are being updated. You will, if you go on the website for the Art Center, you'll see a much greater emphasis on social media expanding the online outreach of the center, which is a very important thing. The two staff members that are there now, uh, Jessica Elliott and Laura Allison, are both young people with a lot of connections to the younger set, which is what we have hoped to accomplish at the Art Center. Uh, the outreach through online media is really bringing in a lot of, of new interest. Um, the gallery has been painted. 
New lighting and air circulation systems will be installed, or in the process of being installed. And further improvements have been made to the parking entry, parking lot entry to the art center. So if you haven't been up there in several months, I think you'll be pleased and surprised at the changes that are taking place. While the gallery itself has been dark for much of the past few months, the art park continues to be open daily, dawn to dusk, and this is the perfect time of year to come up there and explore it. If you have visiting friends, family, children, grandchildren, take them up there. It's always a delight for, for visitors to Port Angeles to explore what's there in the park. During May and June, the gallery was open, hosting the Olympic Peninsula Art Association's annual jury show. And it's now beginning preparations for the events associated with the Paint the Peninsula Festival, which we'll be telling you about in detail in a few moments, and Shakespeare in the Woods. Uh, this is an event that began last year, was a big success, and it will occur again with a new production of Shakespeare's The Tempest for three weeks beginning July 22nd. Um, at your tables, you should have these two rack cards, so be sure you take them with you, and if there are spares left at your table, take them as well and share them with your friends, neighbors, businesses. <coughs> if you want a stack of any of these cards to, for placement in your business, let us know and we'll be sure that we get them to you. Um, children's programs related to both of these events, the Shakespeare and the plein air painting, are also scheduled for this summer so that children can get a taste of what it's like to, to be in a play or to paint outside. Um, another upcoming event this fall the work of artist uh, Clark Monday, whom you're probably familiar with. He's noted for his copper salmon that you, you see in the courthouse and a variety of other places. Uh, his work will appear in the gallery in November and December. Um, the, uh, lastly, I wanted to mention that the Port Angeles Fine Arts Center Foundation <coughs> Board is currently bearing a heavy load with all of this reorganization, planning for new events, hiring new staff, and so on. They're really carrying a heavy load during this reorganization period. And the foundation board could benefit from greater participation by the local business community. I would encourage all of you, if you have any means to do so, that you get involved at the Art Center. If you're not already a member, please join. Uh, membership contributions are really an important part of the funding of the Art Center. Um, new board members are being sought as the board works on developing its strategic plan for the years ahead. If you've got ideas that you think could benefit the Art Center, I encourage you to contact the staff or a member, current member of the board, or just tell us today. Uh, we would love new energy and new ideas. Um, lastly, um, I encourage you to go to the Art Center's website and see the things that are going on and make contact there. Um, the cards that you've been given um, provide the website address, www.pafac.org, or for specific information about Paint the Peninsula, it has its own website, which is linked to the arts. Okay, I'd like now to introduce Chris Avaris. She and I are both among the members of the committee putting on Paint the Peninsula which is very ably chaired by Ann Dalton, who I hope many of you know. So, I hope we'll see you all up there. Thank you, Ricky. Thanks very much, 
Vicki, and thank you all for letting us have time to tell you really about this exciting program that's coming up. It's going to be August August 21st to 28th. The artists will arrive on the 21st and they get a wonderful tour of the Olympic Peninsula to see many of the sites that um, they haven't ever visited before and pick some of the places that they'll get a chance to paint. And then during the rest of the week you'll be able to see the painters out painting. You'll see them on the streets in town, up in the mountains, um, along roadways, really pretty much anywhere. And um, we're really very excited that this is the fourth annual one. It's been quite successful in the past. With each of the um, years that it's been on, we've had a growing number of applications. It's a jury exhibit, so there's quite a selection process that goes on to select those artists that will be uh, painting in the, in the um, competition. The, most many times we're asked, what's plein air painting? Where did it come from? What does it mean? And what it really means is just painting out in the open air, plein air. And artists um, do that specifically to capture the unique lighting of the moment. Um, each part of every day changes the lighting on any existing tree or space or mountain. Um, and they're so excited to be able to, to visualize a special interplay of light with the surroundings um, of a, an old car or a mountain, the ocean, whatever. And what you see here in the left panel of this slide is that the artist painting in the outdoor to capture this unique moment. And, and that's just a great example of how the light's filtering through the trees and is going to be captured in that painting. Um, and within a couple hours, the whole view of that site will change. And then you see other examples of the waterfront and mountains in our lovely, lovely area. The paintings can be done in oil or acrylic.